Hello and welcome to this series of Astranti case study exam tips. In each video, I'll be going through a common error that students make in the case study exams, and I'll show you how to avoid making that mistake so you can be sure to pass your exam. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the third common mistake in this series, and that is unstructured answers. Now remember that in the case study exams, you are writing a series of miniature essays. And this can be a challenge for some because it's easy to lose focus or to go off on a tangent when you're writing in that long form. And the reality is that you need to write well for this exam. You don't need to be an English professor, but you do need to know how to say what you mean. So there we're talking about precision and how to get that across in as few words as possible. So there we're talking about being concise. So those are the two key things to aim for in your writing style when you're structuring your answers. Be precise and be concise. Now, unstructured answers. What does it look like when you've got unstructured answers? Well, you'll know that you have a problem here if you have an answer or a response that is a wall of text with very long paragraphs, perhaps no paragraphs, and certainly no headings to break it up. Now, headings are an easy way to drastically improve your answers. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. But you certainly want to be using headings in your answers. And if you don't have any, then you're probably suffering from unstructured answers. Also, you've got a problem here if you end up with long rambling paragraphs. Paragraph after paragraph, often improvised and written on the spot without much thought going into it. Not only is that a sign that your answer lacks a logical flow, but the examiner is going to really hate reading through that wall of rambling text. So if you can make the examiner's job easier by using headings to signpost your answer, that's the key thing with headings because the examiner can immediately see the structure of your answer because you've signposted it with those headings. And if you can keep your paragraphs precise and concise, those two key things to get in your writing style, and with a logical flow to your answer that builds towards a strong conclusion, then you'll be doing very well indeed. And there is really only one way to achieve that in your answers, and that is planning your answer. And it sounds counterintuitive, I know, because there is a limited amount of time in this exam and your instincts are telling you to start writing as soon as possible so you don't run out of time. And this is perhaps why students end up with unstructured answers. They jump into writing without really doing the thinking first. So take the time to plan. You can take five, ten minutes sometimes, depending on how long you have for the task. And in that plan, you want to outline the structure of your answer. And you start with bullet points for each point that you want to make in your response. And then you can use those as your headings in the actual answer. So you're already doing some of the work. And once you have your points and you have a structure for your answer, you can start to add in a bit more detail to each of your points. So when it comes to actually writing, all you have to do is write. You've done all the hard thinking and most of the hard work that's been done in the plan. So when it comes to writing, once you have your plan, it's just a case of writing out precisely and concisely what it is you need to say. So if you have unstructured answers, remember this. When you have a plan, you'll pass the exam. There aren't many things you would do in life without a plan. You wouldn't drive to a new destination for the first time without at least looking at a map. You wouldn't cook a meal without perhaps, or a new meal at least, without looking at a recipe. You wouldn't go on holiday without having an itinerary and a plan and what time to get to the airport and where it is you're going, all those sorts of things. So you certainly shouldn't be sitting a case study exam without one either. So here's an example of what a plan might look like when you are sitting this particular exam. So you can see on the screen here, those in blue, those those sentences, those points that are in blue and in bold, okay, those represent the structure. So the question here is in two parts. We've got A and B. And now A is a question relating to delaying financial statements and relating to corporate governance. So it's that type of question. And then section B is the advantages and disadvantages of 
a functional structure for the company with a focus on control. Okay, now you can see that we've got a basic structure here. We haven't fully fleshed out all the points. We've just written point one, point two. This might be the starting point of your plan. And even within that plan, you might develop those points. You might actually write out what the point might be. So in this case, if it's about delaying financial statements, it might be one major issue, how this might impact shareholders negatively and it you know might be concerning for them. That would be point one. And you would do something similar for point two. And you can see here that you're building up the structure you can do this in sort of five to 10 minutes. And like I say, if you add in a bit of detail, you've done quite a lot of the heavy lifting or the hard work up front. You can see on section B, the advantages and disadvantages. So you've got a section on advantages and advantage one, two, and three. And you can see in brackets, there's six marks in total and we're gonna aim for two marks per advantage. So we know that when, when we get to this part of the question, we'll have a title for advantage one and we want about a paragraph or so underneath there, fully explaining the advantage, why it's an advantage, and applying that to the scenario. And then you go on to advantage two and advantage three, doing the same thing. And then you move on to the disadvantages. Again, two marks per disadvantage. You have a heading for each, and under each heading, you'll fully explain the advantage, why it's an advantage, making sure it's applied to the scenario. And once you have this process it becomes a much easier thing to manage because it's just a case of making sure you've got everything covered that you came up with in your plan okay now if you want more on this if you want a more detailed breakdown of how to really plan your answers then i'd recommend taking a look at our exam technique study text or video series available at the astranti website that is a full study text where we go through how to develop a case study exam technique. And we go through all of the key aspects. And one of those is how to structure your answers and how to develop a plan. We also have an accompanying video series that goes alongside that study text. So this is an area where you need to improve and make uh, to, to progress, then I would highly recommend having a look at that study text or video series. So that's it for the third common error, which was unstructured answers. Now, hopefully you can avoid making this mistake and falling into this trap. And even if you do, you can at least identify where you've done it and learn from your mistakes. Failure is after all an important lesson, but you'd much rather fail a mock exam than the real exam. And again, if you want to get practice of this, then I would highly recommend sitting our mock exams and if you really want the detailed feedback from a, a marker, then go on and get the marking and feedback as well. There's really no better way to improve your exam approach than to have an expert tell you what you're doing wrong and how you can improve. So that's all for now. The next common error we'll be looking at, the fourth one, will be running out of time in the exam. So we'll be looking at how to identify whether you're falling into that uh, to that trap or whether you're struggling with that and some actionable steps for overcoming that and improving your time management in the case study exam. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. So if you found that video useful we have many more videos like that one on our YouTube channel so give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want access to more of that content. We are also around in other places on social media. We have an Instagram page. We are available on Twitter and we have a number of Facebook groups related to which particular level you are at. So if you're an operational student, have a look for our operational group where you'll find useful content there. And of course, you can find us at our website, www.astranti.com, where you can get access to many free materials.